are these people? Not only, you know, is no. it happening? Is it happening here? You know, it's it's funny enough happening in Germany. Never heard of anything weird happening yeah. in Germany before, but it's our story begins uh, literally people being arrested over book covers and now wearing shirts with watermelons on them or little red triangles or yeah. You know. So this mm. chapter of the story begins. Now, if you remember back in April, we covered that the Palestine conference was raided by, I believe it was 2,500 German police officers, a tiny little conference, more than one per person that, that attended to try to bust this up. Ali Abu Nima posts this on Twitter the other day and says the electronic intifada's Ali Abu Nima is being threatened by German authorities with prison and fines for giving this talk about why Germany is participating in Israel's genocide in Gaza. He's doing it anyway. He says, and here's C.J. Hopkins, C.J., uh, of course, his own Indie Media Award honoree, as if things weren't, as if things weren't totalitarian enough in New Normal Germany, where he lives, now the authorities are threatening to imprison activists for just speaking. This has nothing to do with which side you're what, of whatever you're on. It is a crackdown on dissent, any type of dissent. Wake up and fight back. Again, Ali saying, I just received a 15-page notice from the German government threatening me with fines and prison if I proceed with an online talk at Palestine, Palestina Congress today. I do not take orders from a regime that is participating in genocide and fully intend to go ahead with my talk, which he did remotely. Again, Dan oh no, Cohen... He's got books. Dan Cohen reminding people that the Berlin regime <laughs> prosecuted CJ for his writings right on German fascism rolled out of the pretext of COVID because he put a swastika on a <sighs> surgical mask. Okay. But Ali also wrote an article and I brought it here. Germany is threatening me with prison for this talk on Palestine. And he says, authorities in Britain, in Berlin, are threatening me with prison for giving a speech via Zoom to an audience in Germany on that country's role in Israel's ongoing Holocaust against the Palestinian people in Gaza, to whom, many of to whom he is actually related. So it's kind of personal for him. I gave the talk anyway to thousands of people viewing it online, and you can watch it in the video above. It was part of the Palestine Conference in Exile held on 25th and 26th of July. About two hours before my scheduled talk on the 26th, I received a, via a lawyer in Germany, a 15-page notice from government authorities in Berlin informing me that I am prohibited from participating in the conference by any means, including online. The penalties include fines and up to one year in prison. <sighs> okay. As I spoke from the United States, Germany can claim no jurisdiction over me but I've been given to understand that German authorities may still open a criminal case against me for violating the order. So be it. As I stated in the talk, I do not take orders from a regime that is participating in a genocide, and I take inspiration from Martin Luther King Jr., who wrote in his letter, letter from a Birmingham jail, that one has a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. Mm -hmm. I would have made the same decision to speak if I had been in Germany, and I am conscious that those organizing for Palestinian rights there, especially those members of the Palestinian community and their Jewish comrades, have already faced serious repression, including bans, police beatings, home raids, arrests, and other repressive, repressive measures. Conference organizers say that the ban echoes previous oppressive measures and shows once again the repressive face of German democracy, which it does. Right to jail, right away. The organizers add, in reference to the action against me, quote, the persecution of a journalist exposing Germany's support of genocide mirrors the suppression of dissent, and it raises critical questions about whether Germany 
<coughs> has fully internalized the lessons of its past or if it is repeating the same mistakes under a different guise. In April, German authorities violently raided and shut down a Palestine conference in Berlin, banning speakers including Greek politician Yanis Varoufakis, Dr. Hassan Abu Siddha, I bless you. historian Salman Abu Siddha, and Ali Abu Nima himself. We covered that back then. Yep. The only person who managed to speak before that conference was violently shut down was journalist Heb Jamal. She participated in this conference too. Dasan Abu Siddha, the surgeon who treated victims in Gaza during the first month and a half of Israel's genocide, was detained at the airport as he entered Germany to speak at the April conference, slapped with a ban on political activities, also threatened with fines in prison, and deported to the UK. Turned around and put on another plane home. In Germany, the oh, country... Imagine, hmm? uh, imagine in Germany, if you would... Anyone doing anything like this to a speaker of uh, from Israel? Mm -hmm. The outrage that would occur, like just the hypocrisy, is crazy. Yep. In Germany, but anyway. In Germany, the country whose leaders cry never again, bearing witness to, gen to genocide, is now a crime. So. Therefore, it was in response to that state violence and, gen and censorship that organizers held this conference completely online. Panels with other speakers will be published on the conference website in the coming days. He says, my 20 minute talk, Germany is guilty of genocide. Well, how does that, what do you mean? My 20 minute talk covers Germany's role in the ongoing Israeli genocide in Gaza and Germany's historical complicity with Zionism a racist, fascistic, and colonial ideology. I now talk about how Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock have spread fabricated Israeli atrocity propaganda that justifies and incites genocide, and I called for both German leaders to be brought to justice. I try to answer the question of why Germany which purports to be a modern democracy, would arm and support Israel as it exterminates Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. I explained that the, the German alliance with Zionism predates World War II and has roots in the anti-Semitic ideas of Protestants in the 19th century. It continued through the Nazi Holocaust and remains intact to this present day, into present day. All right, that's he's talking about Lord Balfour and the Zionist Conference of 1898 and the the Balfour Declaration correct. and and the plan all along to establish a, a a Zionist state aligned with more Christian Zionists than Jewish Zionists, which out no Christian Zionists outnumber Jewish Zionists. Again, see Reef and Collins segment on that on INN News recently. Okay, uh, I explained that, in fact, the German, right, okay, indeed, far from being the modern democracy it claims it proclaims itself to be, many of the institutions of West Germany and later reunified Germany were founded by former members of the Hitler regime. Mm -hmm. Former Nazis occupied mm -hmm. many senior positions in the government of West Germany. Who? Kurt Kiesinger, who was West German chancellor in the 60s, had joined the Nazi party before in 1933, the year Hitler came to power. He had, as journalist B. Klarsfeld uh, explained, been a high officer of Nazi propaganda during the war. Modern Germany's intelligence service, known by its initials BND, was founded by Reinhard Gellin, uh, Gellin who was a senior Nazi spy chief under Hitler and a later close collaborator of the CIA. Um, I believe that was Operation Paperclip. Modern Germany's yep. intelligence. <laughs> right, we, we said that. Um, as well, and well into the 1970s, the top ranks of West Germany's Justice Ministry teamed with former members of Hitler's Nazi Party. And I'm sure he's got more receipts to that in his speech here. We will have mm -hmm. a full link to his speech in the description or this article, which will have it embedded. 
Um, IOF uniforms brought to you by Hugo Boss? I mean, no. No. Aren't they designed by Hugo or by Calvin Klein? I don't remember which one. <laughs> I don't remember, but if it's Hugo Boss, that's extra funny. Um, yep. 10 Rabbit Podcast. Go check them out and subscribe if you haven't yet. Actually, the factoid is that there are more Christian Zionists in America than there are Jews on the entire planet, which is crazy. Mm. <clears throat> um, unlike an organization that's funded by Jeffrey Katzenberg, we are funded by our users and by the people watching now, and we love you for it. Um, please, if you can, and if you can't, enjoy the show, watch the show, but support independent media because we need it more than ever to challenge the corporate crap that's out there. You can do so by any of the links there or by going to co-fee.com slash Indie News Network as well. We're the only ones telling it like it is out here because corporate media sure ain't telling you what's going on with this. Okay, they're trying to bury this stuff. They're trying to hide it. They're trying to make it inconvenient and distasteful for people to even discuss. We're not going to do it and we're not going to turn away and we're going to keep, keep spitting.